GameSpot's Game of the Year 2015 was The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. That's kind of all y'all got to hear was that that was the Game of the Year. What you didn't get to hear was all of the screaming and conversations and throwing of feces all of that stuff <laughs> sorry, uh, so that. <laughs> we're going to get into a little bit of that uh, sort of how we got uh, got into that or how we got around to the witcher 3 and this but also this is kind of more importantly what i want to do is like this is Andy had this idea we're going to round up everyone else's game of the year awards so we're going to basically cast shade on all the other games <laughs> websites and say that's bullshit that's bullshit or what we agree with um uh, let's get into our conversation, I guess, via some of the other winners. So Games Radar picked Metal Gear Solid Five, the Phantom Pain, as Game of the Year. It was that Rocket League and The Witcher was kind of this like three-way conversation that we had forever. Uh, Peter, that was your favorite game of the year. It was. Uh, you gave it 10 out of 10 um, on GameSpot. Uh, this year was fantastic for, for games. We had a couple of 10 out of 10s. So that was one of them. Um, yeah, what did you what did you think about the conversation we had about like you agree with Games Radar that it, it was Game of the Year? What do you think about the conversations that we had about The Witcher and Rocket League and all that stuff? I haven't read Games Radar's justification. Mm. Uh, I think it's a phenomenal game, and uh, you know one of the things whenever I talk about before I start talking about why I love it, I always have to preface like cut cut people off by saying I know there's problems. Like right. I know there are times when quiet is just unnecessary mm. like her appearance i know the second half of the game had some pacing issues right and the story maybe felt truncated at parts um but for me you know the first thing was the gameplay mm. was just impeccable like there's so many things happening at once and once you really get in tune with the controls it, it all happens so seamlessly and you almost forget how intricate it was to begin with mm. but then when you look back or you start to play other games you're like why aren't i transitioning from one position to another as smoothly like how come I can't just quickly whip something out or react <laughs> yeah, to a, yeah. a scenario? Um, so the game, the the controls were one aspect. The visual presentation, both within cinematics and within the game, was astounding, and, mm. and that made it really easy for me to just sort of find myself, you know, in awe of what was happening around me. Um, and and quiet, you know, again for as many problems as she has. Uh, I don't want to spoil anything for anyone who hasn't played it, unless yeah. you guys agree. Don't, no, no, don't, don't, don't spoil it. Don't spoil it. But get to like. Yeah, I know uh, you're. Yeah, she, she. You're allowed to take companions with you into the field, mm. and uh, I used her quite a bit because I liked her abilities. I thought they gave me a good tactical advantage. Uh, right. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> and uh, because, you know, she can't speak for one reason or another, and yeah. uh, but one thing she can do is hum, and so you know you don't ever always see her when she's with you versus like dog who's next to you right? right she could be off somewhere but you have radio communications and when she's trying to tell you that she's ready to do something mm. she starts to hum this little tune in her ear and i never f like it's easy to feel alone in metal gear even right. if you've got you know your dog with you because it's, it's an animal that's really not that smart yeah like you can kind of tell what to do and it's cute but it's Really, you can only rely on yourself. And Big Watch is basically a one-man army. Yeah, like. but not with Quiet. With Quiet, you're a two-man army, and you know, I, I've, I, I felt really attached to her. And the mm. way that the game sort of manipulated that feeling of attachment, right? It, it, I I've, can't remember a game that I've ever played that made me wrestle with so many feelings, you know, for for one character like that. Um, and that's like, but it wasn't even like a scripted part of the story. I mean, it right. Is scripted but optional mm. the sort of things that happen and it all has to do with how attached to her you are <laughs> yes how much yeah you're, uh, it, we, yeah. let's not get into no, the, any more yeah. of it but that, that was kind of what like the crux of the last the, the the biggest the most frustrating part of the game of your conversation was between these kind of three games and where they sat and how it worked because like that experience that you had i didn't have because not alone did i not use her very often right. i also only completed the first half of that game which was like 70 hours or whatever but like i didn't so i didn't even get to past that point you hadn't completed The Witcher 3. Right. So all the things that we were talking about, was, and like these were both games that were like 120 hours long. Yeah. We had played all these other games and then like Rocket League is this, like trying to compare Rocket League with Metal Gear Solid or The Witcher is a fucking nightmare because it's like, it's a five minute game and it repeats. It just, yeah. for some people it really works. It worked for Rock, Paper, Shotgun. They, they gave it there. They did loads of weird game of the year kind of bits and bobs all over the place. They said it was the, the, their favorite overall game of the year. Um. Yeah, you you cited on that one, right? You still you still think it was the best game that came out last year? Yeah, and I fucking love Metal Gear Solid. Like, I played a lot of it mm. on PC, and, and you like, love The Witcher. Oh, I love love The Witcher. If I'm, we're gonna give like love love love, and I love 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 <laughs> Rocket League. It's our new rating system yeah, here yeah. on GameSpot. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so like Metal Gear was awesome, and there's so many systems at play, and everybody just goes on and on about that, and it's true. Did like, you finish it? 
I did not finish it. Damn it. But like, there's I got so many far, things dude. that the, there's so. <laughs> Uh, I know, I know, but like <laughs> more than even what I was talking about earlier. Anyway, and we had the like, same problem in the Witcher I love Three the setting in Metal yeah, Gear, especially yeah. like that kind of eighties, but tech like higher tech yeah. than we have now. But like Cold War and Soviet. Man, and, play, play that game in post Bowie world. Oh yeah, as well. like, all that Diamond stuff. Dogs plays and together fucking, so uh, well. Like, yeah, yeah, and like it's so strong the the movement and the stealth and the, all the abilities. Like you're saying, don't get me wrong, like that was a phenomenal achievement. And then you go to like Witcher, right? And I'm such a huge Witcher fan, mm. fanboy, and like that game delivered on every little thing you would ever want out of an open world Witcher game. It's, but it's and so, more, it's all so subjective, though, isn't it? Because is. it's, like, it's so all anticipation subjective. and what you yeah. want. And, and then Ro- Rocket League is like a game you don't even know anything exactly. about. Exactly. And but like the, the characters and everything in The Witcher, like that's basically all The Witcher can stand on, right. I think, because like the gameplay is all right, mm, right. and the systems are kind of jank, and the inventory is jank, and the crafting, whatever, it's mm. it's deep, but like. Do you really want to? Like, it, it you definitely, can't like, hang your hat on it. Yeah, it has more wrinkles than Metal Gear. Than, it, oh sure. yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, but like, it's so strong. <laughs> like as a <laughs> narrative experience, and like as a game fan, and as like uh, artist, you know, whatever. <laughs> like we love. Like I love that shit. Like yeah. that's when I think about game of the year. It's like aspiring to greatness. Yeah. Right? What game got there the best? That's kind of the way. So what is and it? About Rocket League. So so this transitions <laughs> into that, right? So it's like. I think Metal Gear was like systems, the best game. Uh, Witcher was like art, yeah, the best game. But then it's like okay, and then out of nowhere, Rocket League consumed my fucking life. It's like a f- fun, it's it became a sport. It's mm. intoxicating. Yeah, and yeah, and I think the reason that I have to say it's my personal game of the year, why I think we should have pushed it for game of the year, was. It's gonna stand longer in my life than a- either of those games. Right. Uh, not just like playtime wise, but just length of time wise. Like and when you think back of like the games you loved yeah. in like ten years from now, you'll click that one out. Yeah. Like so when when I have to rank my personal games of all time, yeah. Rocket League's on that list. Whereas like Metal Gear kind of falls down, <laughs> and so does Witcher because like I because it's like ira- it's irrational love of games. Like yeah. it's Skyrim, Max Payne. But but it's, it's, it's funny Rocket thing League about that is right? that like what. We're, that's the problem we had is because by the time we got to those last three, it's so personal. It's so personal. It's yeah. like, and like, and how do you say my personal feeling yeah. of this game is more than you? Because I guess the problem we had was that you definitely loved Metal Gear Solid perhaps more than the median level, but there was this force for Rocket League because there were so many people. Right. So you, we just uh, had to like, we had to talk between, like the conversations were long because it was like, how went the, does you know popular vote matter against consensus vote? Right. And so, well, so that was the thing though is that we ran like a staff wide popular vote, and the numbers were very different for the top three. Mm. Like Metal Gear had way more support, and until we started to to whittle things down and and, and you know have these open discussions, and an impassioned speech can change people change yes. people's minds. Yeah. Impassioned one way or another. <laughs> Can I think really we, <laughs> alter people's opinions. Yeah, I, I think it's easy to argue logically for Rocket League as well. Like as That's a, like all the games you can argue logically, but yeah. like as a video game, like it's it is a fucking video game. Like mm. you're playing it, you're interacting, with, you're getting better, you're you're playing with your team. It's like it's the culmination of all this modern stuff. Like good matchmaking. Like it was free, so everybody there's a huge pool of players. Mm. Like you get better and good you, online communication. Good online communication, like good easy control. communication, like yeah. journey style, right? No problem. Yeah. Like, no problem. No problem. No problem. <laughs> Take a shot. Defend it. <laughs> like it's you know you know you just yeah. It just becomes and <laughs> this stupid thing I wrote that I I'm gonna share and it's so far up my own butt, but who cares? <laughs> it was like so Witcher. It's a dark place. So this is just comparing Witcher and Arc. Witcher yeah. the the art is the writing, the characterization, mm. the acting the storytelling, uh, the pacing, everything that goes into that. But like the the poetry in Rocket League is actually you doing it on the field. Like right. You leave your mark on the field. Jaco you Benito, baby. You're, goal. you're talking about game. the beautiful game. And to me, that's more powerful, you know, in a way, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, but and, okay, but so why yeah. is that? Why is that different from something like FIFA? And I'm not saying that oh, okay. I think yeah. it, it isn't. Good question. But I just, but that I think people would probably benefit from I think hearing why. Danny Do actually to, like broke that down really well. Or it's like in FIFA, you're playing it yeah. as a team. The the, the, the the quick elevator pitch of that is like in FIFA, you're playing as a team, and in Rocket League, you're playing as a foot. You're like your your direction over the ball is is it's like it's about where you hit that ball and where it mm-hmm. goes, not the plays you're making. So it's kind of like it's like a macro micro kind of. Thing. And for me, like Rocket League, uh, I've said it a bunch of times last year, was like, it was, it was the best soccer game, best football game I've ever played. Because it felt more like when I was 
I like I've played football my whole life, and yeah. I felt more like on and even like the weirdest thing is like because I played on goal like from my whole life like at various like levels like I've I've played for like t- twenty years I guess, and I have had times where I have like run, as a goalkeeper predominantly so I, I've had times where I've run across the goal and like fingertip like anticipated this ball I think it's gonna go there they hit it and then I barely saved it and I still remember those moments and like I have done that in Rocket League and it's felt the same. Sure. And so and that's like really strange. So powerful. Yeah. But anyway, so that's anyway. Got the kind of stuff that we got into. Yeah, yeah. So it's interesting to look at some of the other winners on different websites. The Guardian gave, for instance, Bloodborne was one that Bloodborne fans, like the people Blood, who Bloodborne. want Bloodborne to be game of the year, are so sure that it's game of the year. And we had a lot of people saying like, it's fine, you think that, but Bloodborne's the best game that came out this year. Uh, RPS, uh, or sorry, um, The Guardian thought that as well. What do you think about that, Peter? It's a tight game. Yeah, no, it's a it's one of those games that I wish I was better at because I didn't mm. get I wasn't able to finish it, um, and partially that was due to time because I wasn't able to get better. But that game has amazing atmosphere and it has really really good mechanics that are difficult but fair. Mm. Um, I think it has a lot of go- things going for it. What I think was missing from me when when listening to other people talk about it is that it was solid but not special. Right. And uh, I'm not sure why. Maybe that's because we have Dark Souls and that was sort of a semi-blueprint for uh, for Bloodborne. Um, but at the same time, like I- I'm not going to sit here and say it's not an amazing game that doesn't deserve recognition. Mm. And if they had the best experience with it, then kudos to them. Yeah. Like, that's, that's what they believe it is. A little bit of an outlier in terms of the median. That should yeah. not be uh, denied. That's not... Like, this is the interesting thing about Game of the Years is that like nobody's wrong. Uh, yeah, which is uh, IGN, for instance, the Imagine Games Network. They picked the same game we did, which were three Wild Hunt. Um, I, I guess the one the, the, this is the one we're leading up to because it's it's the one in which people are saying like, no, that's wrong. And I think there's a lot of interesting discussion to have about this, which is that <clears throat> although uh, Polygon gave Witcher the best open world game, yeah. their game of the year eventually went to Her Story, which is a game I think we had on I think it was like 18th or so on ours. So we did recognize it as a as a great game, but it won a bunch of awards at the Game Awards. Uh, it's kind of in a lot of people's top tens around there. Um, but it is kind of interesting to think that either the consensus vote or the popular vote put a game that was so far down the list of so many people's uh, game of the year uh, right at the top. Uh, Peter, what do you think about that? The, 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 it kind of does speak to the people who work at Polygon, right? It does, like, it makes sense. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, of course, that's the game the Polygon would probably go for, right? Um, yeah, but I don't know that I want to like whittle it down to just the identity of Polygon uh, or just sort of like, well, we know who works there and what they like. Right. But, you know, like people we're so concentrated in our discussions because we work in an office together. Like the games that we play, like Rocket League that we fall in love with, mm. you know, that sort of it, it starts to fold in on itself and become, you know, this deeper thing. Uh, and so who knows, maybe the right mix of people played it there and, and gotten enough people's ears and then they played it and their discussions around it were more impassioned because in the office here, you know, when we started playing that game, it was like, oh, her story is actually pretty interesting. Yeah. You know, like, and then we, we kind of like dabbled in talking about certain things, but I also don't think enough people played it. And I don't think we had long enough discussions Mm. about what happened in that game, uh, and why it worked. And I think maybe if we did, and this probably applies to other games as well, it may have been higher on our list. Mm. Probably wouldn't have been top 10 though, right? Uh, or at least number number one. No, I I don't think I, I don't think so. Not based on the personalities we have here. Mm. And again, I hate to sort of just like put people into a corner at Polygon or any website and say, well, of course they chose that. But um, but you know, I mean, th- there is this perception that they are very socially focused mm. and uh, they're into experimental stuff and you know. Whatever. That's that's kind of an interesting thing, actually, that we kind of touched on um, a lot of the times in our conversations here is that, like, games press loves something new. Like, we probably appreciate the new more than most, uh, like, the median gamer because right. we're interacting with so many games all the time. So when there's something new, it kind of, like, sparks a, a, a joy in us because we're used to playing so many so many things. Yeah. So I wonder if there's something... Because the, the, the public reaction to something like this is either people saying, like, oh, okay, that's great. You're championing a new type, a different type of game. Then the other people would say, like, oh, it's an FMV game and you're just being contrarian for the sake of it because, like, you want to look different and no one's going to pick her story this year. Uh, so if what we're talking about is actually that this is just something that they really liked... Uh, is it to be criticized or like, how do you feel about the idea that the games press should represent gamers and not tell it, it should, or like, where does it represent gamers and where does it represent the people writing? You know what I mean? I mean, cause, I, cause that's, I feel like that's how people look at our game of the year as well. They go like, pick the right one. 
because you're speaking for us. You know what I mean? Okay, anyone at home who thinks that that should be the case, yeah. next time you're talking to your friends about games, talk about the games that you think your sister would like. I mean, right. I, that's yeah, a ridiculous yeah. notion. Like, why should I, why should I have to change who I am? Like, if I'm in this position and my position is to talk about the games that I care about the way I want to know or the way that I want to talk about them, that's my prerogative. That's all I care about. Games are very personal. They're not this thing that is to be sort of like mixed together and then like slopped on a plate and say, here you go. That, this is games <laughs> Please, for everybody. Peter, can I have some more? <laughs> no. Yeah. It's, uh, dude, I, I mean, this is, the, this is the problem we face in comment sections, right? Where people, right. people yeah. get very personal, but they don't realize because they think we're doing a disservice because they think that's what the average person wants. Mm. And the, uh, there is no average person unless, no. unless you're trying to go for like which game sells the most, but that comes down to so many hey, different hey, things. Hey, guess what? How many people had call of duty on like if you want, like the next layer Zero. of exactly the, yeah. the next layer of that is go. like because we can't say oh like then if if you know, polygon are like let's just say they're being on like the you know they're representing one percent of people and like we're representing more people because we picked the way like fucking man like destiny right <laughs> like the taken king didn't qualify but that yeah. that's what people were playing people were playing dota yeah. and league of legends yeah call so of duty that's a good question that i want to like pause it right yeah go for it what if because we do the game of the year and because we because it's fun i guess and gets traffic and whatever. yeah but like i really if, enjoy the process i yeah. think it's like super fun it's a good way to like actually talk about games. yeah i kind of wish you didn't have as much import attached to it that's the only thing i don't like but like what if we had a every year there was an adjustment to like the best game ever <laughs> right <laughs> oh so it's like it's like a top 100 list that yeah. we just change Hundred seems like a so Half Life Two still at the top. So yeah, it's like five. <laughs> like what are the five best games ever? And it's yeah. like every year you like reevaluate <laughs> yeah, it, like, and it's like Counter Strike is still number one. Yeah, like Half Life, and it's like so. How do you be better than that? Like Dota's up there, right? Like, and then what else? I don't. Peter's know. like shaking his head. Like that. Yeah, that's just that doesn't. That's, that's like that's this year's problem. Yeah, multiplied by a hundred. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if but I had if, my way, we would all write reviews without scores and just leave it at that. Right. We yeah, wouldn't yeah. do these top ten lists. We wouldn't do. Oh yeah it you know i think it i think it can devalue like the t the conversations around games really easily mm -hmm. and ranking games it just becomes like a crap not a crap shoot but it becomes a a very difficult process to actually be sound and reasonable right to be able to easily quantify this is better than that yeah, yeah. at a certain stage you just so because we are like that. hypocritical by nature so it's like yeah. we're gonna change our minds and contradict and it's like so subjective and it's so fucking out there people are playing Loads of Counter Strike right now. Yeah, they weren't maybe ten years ago. And I mean, that Gone Home uptick. map is just blowing up. Yeah, you know? <laughs> and so it's like, what what made that happen? Like League of Legends is super popular, but like yeah. I can't play it. You know what I mean? It's crazy. It seemed like last year felt like a year where it was so difficult. Like any one of these games, you could say is like easily like somebody's, and not even just somebody's like yeah. one person's, but lots of people's yeah. favorite game game of the year: be Bloodborne, Witcher, Her Story, Rocket League, Metal Gear Solid. Like yeah. it's not hard for me to say oh, this is my number one. Anything beneath yeah. that, it's like, ah, oh, shit. I don't. But between five and six, like, yeah. If I move them, does that look right? It's like, what did I like City I Skylines know. more than Mario Maker? <laughs> <laughs> like, Do you wish there one. was like an academy? Do you wish you had more time no. into your life so that you didn't have? Yeah. Well, <laughs> well that's the problem because yeah, that okay. Yeah. So final point on this, I guess, is like, okay, the end game of this is that we end up having something like the Oscars, right? right. Yeah. It's like we don't look at the Game Awards as like that's the be all and end all. Uh, and different various people look towards different people. Like some people look towards like, okay, I want to know what like Total Biscuits favorite game of the year is, or I want to know what GameSpot is, or I want to know what like my favorite Twitch streamer is. Whatever. Like di different people so have many. different layers of import. Yeah. I don't think we want some like one, one, like one bastion of that. Because the, the Oscars feel like they get it wrong every year. Or like, right. or, well, or they try and go for that popular vote yeah. or somewhere between the popular vote and the artic, artistic vote and they kind of... Like Birdman is the her story of like, films, right? It, it, well, yeah, Birdman is like a... Birdman is a game made for film critics. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you could say her story is a game that probably appeals to game critics more than it does to, you know, Joe Call of Duty if that's the median gamer. So, like, I don't know. I just want to recognize things for the special achievements. Like, right, yeah. I, 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 fire me... Game spot, <laughs> but, you know, but like I just, I just think it's, it's what we're doing. You know, it doesn't really serve a, a really strong discussion about games. It just distracts and, and makes us argue again. When yeah. we try to say yeah. this is the best or the worst or whatever. We should just have like Peter Brown. 
game of the year and that's it we don't say anybody else like <laughs> we choose one person every year and that's their year like fucking hunger games yeah <laughs> we have like a, we have like a fucking yeah. gauntlet you have to go oh no through. no 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 yeah yeah we we volunteer peter as tribute yeah. and then we get all the other i mean we games basically press. did this as a pack so yeah, yeah yeah we get all the other games press to pick and then who wins that gets game we figured it out we oh, figured we it out it. we cracked this nut <laughs> Great. baby andy peter thanks so much for coming on here and uh, figuring out game of the year 2016 <laughs> you bet with me i uh, appreciate it uh let us know what you think was game of the year 2015 uh which publication you sided with also let us know like what do you think of the idea that anyone can pick any game for game of the year do you think there's importance assigned to game of the year do you have an appreciation for the fact that this stuff is so subjective and you know ultimately you shouldn't really push your opinion against someone else's opinion or is that something you enjoy let us know in the comments below